Speed cubing, also known as speed solving or cubing, is a mind sport involving solving a variety of combination puzzles, the most famous being 3x3 three three puzzle, as quickly as possible. For most puzzles, solving involves performing a series of moves that alters a scrambled puzzle into a solved state, in which every face of the puzzle is a single solid color. Or in other words, you're just trying to solve the Rubik's Cube as fast as humanly possible, and this video is going to help you get started. This is the Rock Cube, and let's begin. First of all, get rid of that cheap cube that you've been learning how to solve for the past couple of months. We're doing this for two main reasons. Reason number one, this cube is not going to be really good and learning some really hard finger trick is not going to be that easy. These cubes are meant for beginners to solve when, when you talk about beginner speed doesn't really come in the same sentence. Next up, this cube is going to slow you down like anything. Whether you're doing fancy finger tricks or just regular finger tricks, the speed cube is just going to be outright faster than this beginner speed cube. So now what cube do you get? This, the Moyo RS3M. This pretty cube competes with a lot of flagship puzzles out there, but it's just priced at around $9 to $10. Dollars. I don't want to recommend you guys to actually spend some big money on cubes because speed cubing is a hobby you're just entering and I don't really know whether you're going to take it seriously or not. But hey, if you're here to stay, I really appreciate having you here in the cubing community and I'm proud to welcome you into the speed cubing community. Also, you aren't obliged to keep changing your gear regularly. Just because you want to average sub X seconds doesn't mean that you go ahead and spend some money on some crazy cube that's out there. If you feel that your cube is too fast, you're going to adapt to it over over time with practice. There is no cube that's going to be too fast for you or you're not going to be too slow for a particular cube. That is not going to happen at all. And if you're still with friends whether you want to change from your beginner Rubik's cube to your speed cube, I'm going to tell you guys to make the change right now. Spending more time with your speed cube is just going to mean that those finger tricks that you learn with your speed cube, which is just not possible to execute on the Rubik's cube, those finger tricks are going to flow much more smoother on a speed cube. And secondly, that just means these finger tricks start becoming habitual to your songs and over time you develop such fluidity in your songs that you're not going to even remember doing those finger tricks. At this point, you're probably going to go like, Hey dude, I'm going to remain in the cubic community for a really long time. Can I just go ahead and splash out my money on a brand new Fnatic chip puzzle? That is a very good question. But I'm going to recommend you guys to actually stay with the budget speed cube just because you're not going to be able to take full advantage of those new Fnatic chips that come into the market because of your current skin set. And now, by the time you develop a skin set that can be applied to those cubes, there will be new puzzles on the market with new technologies that you can take full use of. That is why just stick with the budget cube and let your skins take over. Once you know how to solve Rubik's Cube, I highly recommend you guys actually try out the 2x2 and the 4x4. The 2x2 is much more simpler since it doesn't have edges, so you don't have to learn any algorithm for it. And the 4x4 is a little harder, just two more algorithms, and you're pretty much done because everything is really similar to the 3x3, you just have to learn how to edge pair. And after that, you can even start learning how to solve these cubes one-handed as well. You see, this is a skin that impresses a lot of people, but it is also a WCA official event, so you can actually take part in other events apart from 3x3. Now, once you have on your gear together, it's time to bring the speed and the cube together. <laughs> That's right, we're going to start timing our songs. The timer that I recommend using is an online timer called CS Timer. There's tons of timers out there, but they're pretty much only different in aesthetics wise and maybe a couple features here and there. But CS Timer is over on a really well bent platform and I highly recommend you actually use it. Doesn't really matter what timer you use, but CS Timer is just so robust and has lots of features, lots of places to store all of your sessions and times, and even has graphs that plot as you saw. It's, it's really nice. Using these online timers mean that they're going to keep a track of all your stats. That includes your averages, your best averages, your best songs, your best average of 5, your best average of 12, and a whole lot more. Certain timers like CS timers also offer certain extra tools. Just like I said, you can have a graph that shows how your time trend is. You can even have a tool that shows you how your cube is supposed to look once you're done scrambling. Also, since you're going to be doing multiple events like your 3x3 100, your 2x2, your 4x4, in CS timer, you can create separate sessions so that you do not mix up your times between these events. And that way you can have a clear picture of your stats of each particular event. And there's like a lot more. And personally, I've barely used all of their features because they just have a ton of features. You can even change the way your timer looks and behaves on CS Timer. Now, when I don't have access to my computer and have to time my songs, I usually use my phone. For that, I use this app called Twisty Timer. Now, if you're on iOS, I recommend this app called Chow Timer. I've used both of these apps and both of them are really nice. Got similar features. In fact, Twisty Time has got a bit more features. You can learn a couple of algorithms here and there. Uh, your ONNs, your PNNs and a lot more. But Chow Tama has got a very, very, very nice and minimalistic look to it, which I really, really admire. I mean, both of these apps get the job done and that's pretty much what matters when you're on the go. But at this point, you're probably thinking, 
When you've seen QB competition, you've seen them use a different timer. This particular timer is called a stack mat timer. And when you time your sense with a stack mat as opposed to a keyboard, the stack mat is going to give you a much larger time. This is because it's much more easier to start from a keyboard as opposed to starting with both your palms on the table. And for that, I recommend investing into a stack mat timer somewhere down the night. The difference in time is not a lot. It's pretty much negligible when you're a beginner but once you start taking speed cubing seriously it's time to actually invest into one of these and when you're getting one of these i recommend getting a mat as well you can use your generic gaming mouse pad or a stack mat anything it's just so that you can cushion the fall because when you leave the cube and try to stop the timer you're going to drop the cube and um, a mat can definitely help so now that you have your shopping is finally ready it's time to buy all of this and where are you going to buy that you're going to buy this online and no it's not amazon it's going to be the cubicle.com or you could use speedcubeshop.com or you could use dailypuzzles.au now i think speedcube shop and daily puzzles deliver internationally i'm not really sure about this i personally haven't ordered from them so i can't really say a whole lot about them now if these sites don't deliver to your country you can always try amazon.com the prices are going to vary a little now that you've got all your stuff it's time to start getting faster for real and for that i highly recommend you guys to start learning the pnl algorithms that's 21 cases maybe not all 21 maybe you can learn around 15 to 17 algorithms in the span of a month or two this will definitely cut down your times because before you would be doing two step theater which would do one algorithm followed by another but now you're going to do it in one algorithm directly and next you'd have to learn some intuitive f2 n f2 n in the start is going to slow you down this is a universal truth but it is going to speed you up so much once you get used to the method of f2 n that you're definitely not going to regret it so yeah that's about it and now if you cannot afford getting uh, all of this stuff don't fret it doesn't really matter this is like to, for the idea in case scenario you can still improve your skins on a beginner cube which is going to be a little harder and yeah i think that's about it uh, that's pretty much it for this particular video i really hope you guys enjoy being in the cubing community i'm going to catch you guys in the next video till then take care bye bye tata